Did you know you can be given a gift while simultaneously be insulted? Yeah, that happened. How do you charge your battery with the Buddy Pole Power Mini 2 in line? Guys, we need your help solving some diesel engine noise for a mobile application. And are two antennas better than one? This time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike. You are watching K8 MRD Radio Stuff. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. We've got four titilizing... Is that a word? I don't know, but let's just say tit. Uh, <laughs> things to talk about today. The first of which, I'm not sure how to take this, so we're just gonna we're going to throw this out there. This guy says, Please, for the love of responsible gun ownership... Move your long gun. The clip is hanging out into the doorway. You probably have one in the chamber, and I would hate to have you knock it over and have an accidental discharge. Rumor has it, you have had an accidental discharge or two. Then he says, instead of just complaining, I took the liberty of getting you a gift. So what he's talking about, I had my 22 back there, and uh, he actually sent me an antenna holder that will also hold rifles. Now, I gotta be honest, I'm a little insulted by the comment, but at the same time, I'm like, hey, you sent me a gift. <sighs> Guys, don't send me things, please. Uh, I'm sure that I'm sure he's, he's got a little tongue in cheek with this comment, but I do find it kind of insulting. So first off, he's not even using uh, the proper uh, vocabulary. It's not called a clip. It is called a magazine. A magazine. Uh, a clip would be like what you would put into like an M1 Grand or something and it pops out. Anyway, to to assume that I don't practice gun safety is a little insulting. I, I probably have forgotten more about gun safety than most people will ever know. I've literally been around guns my entire life. Um... This is kind of the last time I'm going to talk about guns for a while. We really only, this, is a, this is a ham radio channel. I do two gun videos, winter field day and field day. Other than that, it's ham radio, so I don't want to alienate people thinking this is turning into a gun channel. It's not. Uh, but to insinuate that I have it chambered, uh, I don't. Not that one, anyway. Come in my house in the middle of the night and find out which guns are chambered, though. <laughs> um... And rumor has it you've had an accidental discharge or two. Um, yeah, you're just making stuff up. And I'll have you know the only accidental discharges I have are in my bed. And my mom says it's totally normal because my body is going through changes. So if you really are concerned about something, first of all, you guys don't know me. You know, you know me through this channel. But you don't know what goes on in my head. You don't know what I know other than what I tell you I know. If you're really concerned, shoot me an email. My email's blasted all over everywhere. So, yeah, please. I, like, I appreciate the sentiment. I do. Thank you. But I don't know. It, it's just kind of douchey in a little way. But, but thank you. So, all right. We're done ranting. Let's get to ham radio now. So this guy's asking, Hi, Mike. Another solar battery box question. I have a Buddy Pole Power Mini 2. Love that charge controller. Uh, when connecting to when connecting the battery to the battery port, can I connect a BioNO 12 volt charger to the solar port to charge the battery when there's a situation where I can't use the solar panel? No sun, need a quicker charger, whatever. Uh, I plan on having one battery cable going to the solar charger and one going to uh, the fused load. And I don't want to keep opening the box and swapping cables to charge it. I get it. The Power Mini 2 will be more accessible, but I don't want to destroy any of the components if they're not compatible. So he doesn't want to let out the magic smoke. <laughs> and I'm sure all of us can appreciate that. So I happen to have a Power Mini 2. I happen to have it inside a battery box. So let's hop over onto that bench and see if we can do what you're asking. Here we have the Buddy Pole Power Mini 2, and as he asked in the question, you've got a solar input here, your battery input, and then a couple loads. So the way this hooks up, uh, if you don't have it in a battery box, you plug your battery into there, and you would plug your solar panel into here that would keep it charged, and then you would have uh, your loads, your radio, uh, whatever else you may need, 12 volts on that side. His question is, can you charge this 
by plugging in a charge uh, a charger lithium iron phosphate charger to the solar input and the answer is well let's find out so here is a uh, six amp bioeno charger for lithium iron phosphate and you'll see as we plug this in oh snap we're putting 13.9 and 9 volts in at 5.95 amps and our uh, voltage, if we unplug this really quick, we'll see the voltage of the battery is about 13.4 amps. If we plug this in, we can see the voltage has raised. Now we're getting about 14. It'll, it'll climb up to about 14.6, which is interesting though. Um, I'm curious if the voltage for this is actually gonna go up. Uh, it should be about 14.6 volts. Uh, not, I mean, this battery is pretty topped off actually, so it might be going down, but um, yes, you actually can do this. This will this will show you on the, on the side how much power you're putting into it. But let me show you how I have this wired in my box because he's asking uh, specifically about a battery box. So here's a box I built that I call Medium Geek. I just have one solar and one power, uh, uh, power pole on here and a little switch. I, I actually built this for my 12 volt cooler, but I use the Power Mini uh, 2 in here. And uh, so I have it switched, so nothing's on right now, but if I throw the switch, Power Mini 2 comes on. Uh, so this right here is coming from the battery, but it's going to the switch in between. This is going directly to the yellow power pole. And then here I have the load out that's going to the red power pole. So. You can actually charge this one of two ways. You can actually plug the charger into the red one and this will backfeed it through your load. You'll notice we've got 14.12 volts here, but it doesn't show any current, none of that stuff, but it does charge the battery. Now, if I unplug that and plug it into the solar input, now we're seeing uh, we've got 2.9 amps coming in, 14.1 volts and our battery voltage is climbing. So you can actually use this a couple different ways. If you wanna see what's going on with the battery, yes, plug it into the solar. Uh, it actually does work, surprisingly. Uh, a lot of other solar charge controllers uh, will cut off, like the, the solar charge controller I have in Little Geek. Uh, it won't, uh, it won't uh, do anything until it sees a higher voltage, but this one actually does. So now you know the rest of the story. So there you have it, and full disclosure, I actually didn't know that. <laughs> I always charged it through the uh, through the red one, so uh, now we know, and, and sharing is caring. Isn't that great? So thanks for writing in. That's a great question. I, I liked that one. Next, guys, we need your help. I have absolutely no clue what the answer to this is. I've said many times, I am not the guy to ask about grounding and bonding, especially when it has to do with something like this. Then uh, this is for Santa Claus, by the way. This came over from Patreon. He's a patron. Thank you, Santa. Uh, love your work. <laughs> he says, I've got a QRM crisis I've been chasing. I've got an IC7100 in my 2016 Ram Cummins 2500. Let me set the scene. Engine on and working is S9 plus QRM. Okay, so that means like it's he's, he's pushing the gas pedal, right? But, engine on and coasting downhill, it's clean -er. My antenna's a baby Tar Heel, so that's like the little Tar Heel 2 that I have, but I think it only does like 40 through 6. Screwdriver antenna. I'm guessing while coasting downhill or coming up to a stoplight, the truck doesn't need fuel, fuel, so the injection pump stops firing. Makes sense. I'm used to common rail mechanical fuel pumps on old cats in Detroit. I, I just love that we're talking about this, this Detroit power here. Uh, no QRM on those. This Cummins has an electronic system. It literally sings. I've tried running grounding braid from body panels to frame, ferrites out the wazoo. What do I do next? I figured you would know, or at least you have a large enough audience to find the solution. Help me, Obi Ham. You're my only hope. So let me be the first to say, I've already razzed him about not buying a Ford. He decided he needed he needed a, a Dodge Ram Cummins. Which is fine. I had a buddy that worked for Cummins for years. They make great, great, uh, great engines. Cummins diesels, fantastic. Uh, so we don't need to razz him about Ford or Mopar or whatever. Okay. I already did that. So does anybody know? Is there anything else we can do? Our diesel cars or diesel trucks, rather, just a pain in the butt to get rid of RFI. It sounds like he's done. Maybe you just need more grounding and bonding. Uh, bonding. I have no idea. So uh, as a community. 
look you know he's going to be checking the comments so leave leave your comments down below if you have if you have any follow-up questions uh if you have any suggestions we'd like to hear it and everyone can learn more by all reading the comments so uh santa thank you for all the gifts as a child thank you for uh enlightening the world with with happiness and cheer and uh thanks for writing in and thanks for being a patron <laughs> and hopefully we can get an answer for you <laughs> Lastly, uh, we have a question about antennas. And I'm going to speculate on this one, but I'm going to back it up a little bit. This, uh, you say, he goes, blowing smoke up my butt. Love you, man. Love the entertaining. Thanks. I'm impressed with your knowledge of radio. Well, don't say that too soon. But he's asking, I would love for you to explain and solve a question that every truck driver in this country has wondered, is two antennas better than one? Now, of course, we're talking 27 megahertz uh, chicken band. Got to throw that dig in there. But it's, apl uh, but it's applicable exactly straight across for the 10 meter band. And I would say like any ham stick, you know, if you've got two 40 meter ham sticks, two 20 meter ham sticks, whatever. Uh, I say BS, one antenna is best, two antennas just complicated. So uh, thanks for writing in, first of all. And... I don't officially know, but I'm going to speculate and I'm going to show you what I do know. So here's a look at my wireless system for my guitar. It's a Shure QLXD. Uh, it has two antennas and it has what's called diversity reception built in. Now, what that means is it has two antennas. And what it does is the circuitry inside is always looking. It does it like thousands of times a second. Uh, sure calls it like true diversity, I think, is their, their copywritten whatever. But the circuitry inside is constantly looking for whichever signal is stronger on the antenna. It's not actually listening to both antennas at the same time and, and sending that signal through my guitar rig. It's just scanning for the stronger signal. So now you see as I, as here's the, here's the transmitter. And as I wave the transmitter back and forth, you'll notice there's a, there's a, a little antenna indicator on the receiver screen. And you'll see that it goes back and forth between channel A and channel B as the transmitter is, is putting out a stronger signal to antenna A or antenna B. Okay. So I show you this to say that that system is designed that way ham radios cb radios uh diversity reception isn't really in our vocabulary much uh, i have seen some things that, that talk about diversity reception and antennas but our radios don't have this just built in so like the 7610 has uh two antenna ports and I'm not 100%, but there may be a way to have diversity reception, but I, but I don't think so. I don't think that's a feature that's built in. Certainly not in a CB. Uh, we would push the A or the B button and listen to whichever antenna is stronger, or you'd have an antenna switch and you would physically throw a switch and just listen to see which, which antenna is stronger. So if you just had two antennas connected uh, to... A radio I would assume that those signals would just get mixed together you wouldn't get any I don't know if you'd get any enhancement out of it you might uh, but with that enhancement would probably also give you uh, maybe more noise because two antennas are picking up twice as much noise and feeding that down to one coax and ramming it into the the socket on your radio so I don't think you'd really benefit from having two antennas tuned to the same frequency. Now, if you wanted to have, say, a 20 meter ham stick and a 10 meter ham stick hooked up, that would kind of work the same as like a fan dipole. So you wouldn't have to tune them. Your radio should just say, okay, we're putting out 28 megahertz, all the wigglies are gonna go to this antenna or we're putting out 14 megahertz, all the wigglies are gonna go to this antenna. Um, and you probably wouldn't have much with noise, 
because the frequencies just aren't, you know, if you go to 10 meters, 10 meters is, is usually pretty quiet, uh, where 20 meters usually has a bit more noise uh, in general, at least at my house. So uh, you could play it that way, but to have two antennas, has anybody tried this? Uh, I don't th- I don't think it would be a benefit, but if you've tried this, let us know. Let us know what happens. I know Richard the trucking ham was was planning on putting two antennas on his car, but I'm pretty sure he was doing two different frequencies or on his truck rather, excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's that's a good one. I would be curious. Here's the deal. Try it. Try it and let me know. You're not gonna fry anything, uh, especially if you're just on reception so. Uh, That sounds like a good experiment, but uh, one that I think you should try and and let us know. I'll expect a full report uh, by next Mailbag Monday. And at that, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much for watching another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. If you have a question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at iCloud.com, and we will see you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys. 